Hey, would you look at that? Like a glutton for punishment, you're back for more. This is Officer Dan and the GK Tech boys strapped in for another G to the K install video. For today though, we're covering the GR, GT86, BRZ, and FRS rear toe arms. Now first up, spinning right round, right round, just as it should be, are our rear toe arms that you probably would have guessed already. God damn, you're smart. Let's cut the politics out, get straight to the nitty gritty of what these small rods of joy offer. Now they might be small, but they pack quite a punch. Said punches can be found on the product page, which has all the bits and bobs and also gets updated as often as you check your fridge when you're bored and are feeling a little snacky. We will show you where everything goes in a hot minute, so don't lose sleep over that, my little angel. Now that you're up to speed, I think it's time to effortlessly transition over to the install. Casually walking over to your little tofu truck, you'll see the ultra plain and boring tow arm sitting there. You'll also notice the eccentric bolt holding that thing in place, which we have a little treat nestled later into this video on that. But for now, let's rip this old piece of garbage out. First step, get your pointiest nosed pliers out and rip that split pin out of the stud on the OEM tow arm. Get a real spanner, not one of those fake ones, and swiftly wind the nut from the knuckle off the top of the shank, leaving it there for our number two priority, safety. Get your most mediocre hammer that you only use when you can't find your favorite hammer and give that cast knuckle a little bit of a forceful love whack to unseat that taper. Head inwards throwing a spanner on one side and a ratchet on the other, loosening and removing said nut. Now keep in mind what we said earlier, this type of bolt is an eccentric bolt, meaning it's like your crazy uncle. When you're getting your alignment on the OEM toe arm, this is the thing that they're turning one way or the other, just like him during conversation. Anywho, whip that bolt out as fast as possible along with said nut. Now head outwards back to the knuckle side, remove that top nut, and take the arm out completely. Now that that ish is out of your life forever, get our GK arm and although it's not complicated, we thought we'd hold your hand through this assembly just like everyone has done in your life up until this point. Slide the shining star of this show, the shank through the guts of the bearing with the thin silver washer on the bottom and the nylon locking nut to suit. Then head over to the other side, slide the black tapered spacer on the other side in the direction it's facing, shown on the screen, and now put the silver washer and nut on temporarily, so we don't lose anything while we run through the adjustment that this little bad boy has to offer. And what a goddamn perfect transition onto something we needed to cover anyway, that being the goddamn adjustment I was talking about earlier. Yeehaw! As this fine piece of machinery lays in front of you, in its minimum length being 226 millimeters, measuring from the middle of the road those joints on either side. That is made up of 38 millimeters measuring from the middle of the rose joint to the edge of the arm on both sides. Now something that we absolutely recommend is winding the arm out to its maximum safe distance and then adjusting in to your desired length. Why? Because you wind from the maximum safe adjustment to where you want to make sure you have the safest of thread overlappage and safe thread overlap saves lives, my guys. Now measuring this out at its maximum safe extension would be a whopping 297 millimeters, measuring from the middle of the rose joint on both sides. Now this is made up of 74 millimeters, measuring from the middle of the rose joint to the edge of the arm on both sides. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now as mentioned, you can wind that down to OEM length, which measures in at a total of 255 millimeters, measuring again from the same points we mentioned before. That's made up of 50 three millimeters measuring from the middle of the rose joint to the edge of the arm just where the locking nut bottoms out. Our setup is not super crazy so we're leaving it at OEM length for now. I know, lame. But now that we're happy with everything, let's get to the install. First things first, let's take that top nut washer off, throw the arm up with the shank and through the knuckle, seating that taper into place. Ring toss the washer on the shank and wind the nut down. Now this is ultra important, so remember this. You do need to tighten the top nut first. This is going to seat the shank into the knuckle before you do the bottom. Do not mess this up. You will have a bad day and you will come crying to us and we would want to make fun of you on the internet, but we won't. We'll just send you an email telling you how to do it the correct way. Put some pressure on from the bottom to keep the shank in its spot and zap that top nut down with your favorite rattle gun. Get your torque wrench out and torque that down to these specs shown on the screen and chill out for now. Head over to the other side of the arm and throw each insert into each side of the bearing and whip that up into the subframe. Now remember earlier we spoke about that eccentric uncle and or bolt that typically lives here. This is great for on the go adjustments done by your favorite Japanese mechanic. However, for the hard driving, these eccentric bolts are known to move about. 
Us being us and noticing a gigantic red flag in the room when we saw one, we developed the Fixed Adjustment Eccentric Toe Lockout Kit as you can see on the screen right now. And aside from it being eccentric like said uncle, it's square like your brother. That means that it has fixed adjustment. That's right, it ain't going nowhere. Let's give you a supple example in front of your very eyes. If you were to throw that plate on and bolt through, running the plate with the line facing upwards, that would be your grandma spec, aka neutral, aka the vanilla choice. These little sandwich squares with no crusts can be used to get that little bit of adjustment you need in case your arms run out of adjustment one way or the other by running the sandwich out board or inboard like you can see penetrating your eyeballs right now. In our case, we don't want the OEM eccentric bolt to move and plan on throwing this thing around like a dog's chew toy with the adjustable arms that will take up any of our adjustment needs, so we'll be setting this to neutral, so straight on up for us. Now that you're all set, throw your spanner on one side and your ratchet on the other, then tighten and torque these down to the specs shown right here on the screen. Once that's been done, head briefly down south, tighten and torque the bottom nut to the specs shown on the screen. Now like with any other bearing you run, and you've probably heard me say this a million times, the bearing absolutely must run central, it cannot be cocked to the left nor the right central, like our intelligence agencies. Go ahead and hold the tow rod down and tighten the locking nuts down on one side or the other, as you can see with those peepers in front of you. And hey guys, girls, grandmas, grandpas, weird uncles, your son, your fellow human beings, you've goddamn done it. You've now got more toe than a dude with a lot of toes and you're all set. You can get on the horn and book yourself an alignment. On the way to the alignment, think about all the good times we had, the jokes, the torque specs, and remember that we do have some more heat coming your way for your rear end, as weird as that sounds. We'll have more videos hitting your screen for the rest of the rear end suspension combo on your beloved tofu truck. You know who aren't done? These guys. The guys that give you all these how-to videos. And you know we got you. So if you do get stuck and you need a professional to install these, have them do it or reach out to us with any questions you may have via a semi-sarcastic email. Okay, maybe not. This has been Officer Dan Johnny Caps featuring The Zack Attack is back. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.